Hello, everybody. My name is Raul Hernandez. I'm part of the marketing team here at Cypress. And uh, I wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit about uh, our PSOC 4 L series. PSOC 4 L series is one of the newest additions to the PSOC 4 family. It's an addition to the 4200 family and brings to the table up to 256K of uh, flash. We have uh, a lot of programmable analog and programmable digital. We have DMA, USB, uh, two CapSense modules, and uh, a lot of resources to play with, including up to 98 GPIOs. And uh, in this case, I want to use our CY8C kit 046 board that features that part and has a lot of resources to play with. We're going to do a cool USB CapSense and audio demo to show some of the functionalities of the, of the board. If you can take a look at the board, we have the PSOC 4200L. We have uh, USB for users, other than the programming and debugging socket. We have a codec for audio that's going to be driving the audio into this uh, speaker. Uh, we have now up to 98 GPIOs, as I mentioned, in this expansion board. And we're featuring not only one, but two Arduino compatible shields. So this board can actually drive two different shields at the same time with the same piece of four. Uh, which is pretty impressive. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a uh, go over a project that I've already built. The project has uh, the USB interface as an HID. So we're going to be streaming audio from the computer to the piece of 4L. We're going to DMA the information to the to the codec to get uh, to get it out through the uh, audio jack. At the same time, we're going to actually control our music player through the CapSense module. So we're going to be able to play, pause, mute play with the volume and so forth. This is very important because uh, we're going to achieve a bit perfect audio, right? The idea is all of these communications play at different frequencies of data transmission. So having a, a good synchronization between them, it's critical. All right, so let's go into the project. This is our USB audio screen. What we have here is our USB to Y squared S interface through DMA. So we're going to be getting the information from the PC through USB. And we're going to be using DMA to create a buffer and then send that uh, information to the Y squared S component and then eventually to the codec for audio. This is very important because any, any latch up or any information being corrupted at, in this place is going to result in low quality audio or uh, little pops when we hear the music. At the same time, we have two TCPWM byte counters that are used to register the ins and out bytes. And we have a feedback counter for asynchronous audio, which it's UDB based. We also have the audio sample rate clock selection, and we have a nice squared C component that's driving the communication with the codec. On the second tab, what we have is the CapSense implementation. So this is going to be driving the following gestures in our CapSense touchpad. So we're going to be able to play and pause on the center button. We're going to do previous track, next track, we can uh, mute, we can do volume control by either uh, using the, the rotation gesture or swiping up and down. We can do next track, previous track, and uh, all of this through CapSense and send that information to the PC via USB. So once we have this uh, the hardware set up, I can just go ahead and double click our USB component. I think this is very important because one of the great features that PSOC does and PSOC Creator uh, implements is the ability to trans transform complex uh, protocols like USB to a very easy and friendly to use uh, graphical interface. So this is our USB module and if you can see we have our device route which we can then set up. We have our vendor ID, our product ID, we have manufacturing strings and we can configure some of the characteristics of our USB device. If we then go to the audio descriptor, this is the tab where we're setting up our audio, right? Some of the characteristics we have, we're going to be uh, using an uh, active 24-bit interface right here, which is going to give you some pretty good quality audio. The idea is to stream in stereo at 48 kilohertz, so that means 48,000 samples per second. We can also go out and determine, you know, the frequency, the sampling, and all of this done in a very simple graphical way. Some of the details of the implementation can actually be found on the application notes that we're going to show later and uh, using the data sheet that's included in the PISA Creator component. So by clicking here in the bottom left, we can actually access overall description and a very detailed description of APIs and all the information that's needed to do some of the setup. 
All right, so all of this is well documented and described here. I'm not going to go into the details. Some of the other characteristics that I would like to go over is we're doing an asynchronous communication. This is because, again, we have different uh, data rates happening at the same time over the USB. If we go to our HID descriptor, we have all the descriptors that our user interface is going to be using to communicate with the PC. So we have basically a, a consumer device set up helping us play with the play, scan, stop. This is going to help us set up every command that we're going to be playing with on Capsense. As I mentioned then, we have DMA uh, dealing with the transfer of information. And we can then go check out our Capsense implementation. Very simple again with the component, we have different buttons up down, left, right, and uh, the radial slider. Once we have all of that set up, we can go and build the code. This is one of the examples you can actually access both through Creator, the kit page, and uh, cypress.com. So make sure that you, you go out and take a good look. Everything is well documented, both in application notes and data sheets. So all of the documentation is available for you. Once we have the code generated, we can all also go to the DWR file as part of our work space. In here, as always, we have the pin assignment. This is already done for you. We have all the captions and the codec and communication interfaces selected. And what I wanted to show you here was, as always, our analog mapped up. We have our two captions modules and our clocks. Very important to mention, if we double click the IMO, we have a frequency of 48 megahertz with a selected USB trim. This helps us achieve the accuracy of plus minus 0.25%, which is needed to achieve the proper USB communication. Once we have that, we can then go and take a quick look at our main.c. This is where our code is implemented. We have initialization. We have our four with uh, basically the different stages and uh, different warnings printed. All right, And all of this is divided in the different libraries that you can find, again, in our workspace selection. So after going through the project, let's do a quick programming of the board. Let's make sure that we have the USB connected to the, the programming and debugging interface. We go ahead and select that. That's going to generate the code uh, and program the part. So once the board is programmed, we can now change the USB from the program and debugging uh, connector to the user. I should now be able, after I connect it, to actually play from our captions module. So once we have that, we can control, we should be able to reduce the volume, play, and mute. All right? I hope you enjoy the demo. Uh, again, all of this code, information, and documentation can be found in cypress.com backslash psec4. So please go ahead, take a look at it, and uh, share with us whatever you find and develop at cypress.com backslash projects.